Hello everyone, we are looking at Consolidation of Financial Information Chapter 2 of Fundamentals of Advanced Accounting. This topic is guided by ASC Topic 805 and 810, uh, which looks at the relationship between parent and subsidiary and the business combination. So we are, our discussion will be based on the acquisition method. The acquisition method um, is guided by the fair value measurement of um, the business that is being acquired. Okay, so our, our first learning objective is to discuss the drivers of uh, the combination. Okay, so why would a company want to combine uh, with another company? Uh, this pretty much relates to the discussion that we had under the equity method. Uh, so basically, under the equity method, we talked about significant influence. Uh, so here we're talking about control, okay, where we own more than 50% of the other company. And if that's the case, there's going to be business objectives mainly uh, guided to you know, increase profitability, uh, growth, etc. whatever the business objectives are of the company. So here are some of the characteristics of uh, combinations. So basically to achieve uh, vertical integration, uh, cost savings, economies of scale. Uh, we have a quick entry of products into market so we don't have to go through the middleman because we are the middleman. And so uh, it makes a lot faster and more com competitive our business um, than other companies. And of course, business expansion, it could be diversification diversification so we want to expand or enter other industries and other businesses uh, so again we are increasing our uh, competitive stance in the market so we have some examples of the acquirer uh, and the target company that was acquired uh, perhaps the one that you're most familiar with will be Facebook uh, and the purchase of WhatsApp and Instagram. Instagram is not listed here, uh, but uh, that would be an example of business combination. So in our objective too, we recognize uh, when a consolidation of financial information uh, is necessary. Uh, so we actually going to determine what exactly do we mean by consolidation. <clears throat> and that's listed under ASC A10-10-10-1. And so we, the reason why we are consolidating on financial statements is because uh, it will be it will provide uh, better understanding to third-party users of the financial statements exactly what our relationship is with these companies. Um, and and that way we present it as one. And it, you know, as we talked about during the equity method, there might be intra-entity transactions, and so we need to consolidate these intra-entity transactions to avoid any redundancies. Uh, so remember that financial statements uh, are supposed to be useful to third-party users so that they can make uh, decisions that are pertinent to their own financial goals. And so consolidation uh, presents uh, a fairly representation of the relationship with these companies. Okay, in our learning objective three, we're looking at business combinations, the various forms that exist in terms of business combination. So what do we mean by business combination? It refers to a transaction or other event in which an acquirer obtains control over another uh, company. So we say control uh, is usually defined when we own more than 50%, but again, we have control over that company. 
Uh, it could be done through various transactions and events. Uh, it may not be the same as what these companies are represented in legal form. And we're going to discuss this a little bit further later on. And we're treating these two or more enterprises or companies as a single economic entity. And thus, we are consolidating their financial statements. So we have Exhibit 2.2 shows us uh, a synopsis of the different types of combinations. Uh, we basically have the statutory merger. Uh, so in a statutory merger, uh, we have one company purchasing another company, and then either one of those two companies will dissolve, and there will be one surviving company. Uh, so this business combination can take place as either a purchase of assets and liabilities or a purchase of stock. So in this uh, chapter two, we're talking about 100% control. So we are purchasing the whole entire company and the other company legally dissolves. So basically we have company A who purchases company B. And so the only surviving company is going to be either A or B. So there's only one surviving company. The other company dissolves. We also have a statutory consolidation. So we may have two separate companies that joined forces, but they are going to dissolve and there's gonna be a different company that will remain, a newly formed corporation that will, uh, will be the surviving company of the other two uh, original companies. And then we could have control without dissolution. So the two companies, the parent and the subsidiary continue to exist as separate entities. They conduct businesses, they might have intra-entity transactions, but at the end of the day, they have not dissolved as entities. Uh, and so they continue to exist. So if every time that we're going to issue financial statements, we have to combine, we have to consolidate the financial statements. And the other entity will be, or the other type of business combination will be the variable interest entity uh, or special purpose entity. Uh, we have uh, kind of introduced this in uh, the, uh, when we were talking about the equity method uh, so we could have a significant influence or we could have control, uh, not just by ownership percentages, but also by contractual agreements. Okay. And so if that's the case, so we may have a very small ownership. We're not meeting that percentage, the threshold, but because we control this company through contracts, then we have to consolidate this, their financial statements. And so since you may have uh, different owners or lots of owners of this variable interest entity, we have to identify the primary beneficiary. And that primary beneficiary will be the one that will be consolidating the financial statements. So we're gonna actually take a look at this in chapter six. Okay, so we talked about control. So control means that we have an ownership um, majority and that's defined as more than 50%. So if that's the case, then we were to consolidate our financial statements. Um, and so this means that the parent and the subsidiary financial statements are put together into one financial statement. So if you were to look at uh, Walmart's um, 10K, the annual report, you will see that they are presenting their consolidated 
income statement, their consolidated balance sheet. So they have many other companies in different countries, uh, many subsidiaries, and so they're going to combine all those into one financial statement. Okay, so what we need to pay attention as we work through the Chapter 2 problems is whether the entity has dissolved or not. If any, if they are, the, the, the company, uh, the parent company or the subsidiary, either one has dissolved. Uh, as we looked at the statutory mergers under uh, type of com uh, business combinations, if either one of those companies have dissolved, or both dissolved and form a newly uh, formed corporation, then uh, we're going to have to transfer, uh, we're going to have to do an adjusting entry to transfer the assets and liabilities um, of that company that we're purchasing to the surviving company's financial records. So basically, we need to reflect the fair market value because we're using the acquisition method um, in the financial records of the surviving company. Okay, we're gonna take a look at this later on in more detail. And then if a separate incorporation, meaning the companies have not, neither one of the two companies have dissolved, both of the companies continue to exist as separate entities. Uh, but one of the companies has control over the other, then we're going to have to consolidate the financial statements, just like we talked about Walmart, um, when we issue uh, the annual report or, or any other purpose for issuing financial statements, we will have to consolidate. Okay, so uh, how is this consolidation going to affect the accounting records? If we dissolved, this is a one-time uh, journal entry, right? So uh, on the day that we acquired this company, this company, uh, company B dissolved. And so company B would have closed their uh, accounting records. Uh, so they will have zero balances for all the income statement and balance sheet accounts and everything has been transferred to the surviving company. In terms of separate incorporation, each company will have their own records. Each company will continue to exist as if there's no consolidation. They will only have the worksheets for consolidation when they prepare their financial statements. Okay, and that concludes uh, this presentation.